so to um, find uh, trig limits, uh, we don't have too many tools yet, but one of the best tools is the squeeze theorem. Now the squeeze theorem is great. Um, and you know, so we have all these uh, conditions. Basically, um, what we're doing is um, we're looking for the limit uh, of, a, of our function f of x. So the one that we're interested in is f of x. And so what we do is we find two functions, h of x and g of x, that uh, surround f of x. And then what we say is that if, if that's the case, and then if both g of x and h of x have um, at a the same exact limit, then the function f of x, which is in between those two, would have to have the same limit. So let me show you a picture of what of what the idea basically is. So you have, let's say for example, um, g of x, you know, it's wiggling around, something like that. And it, it's like this. And then you have h of x, and you know, it's wiggling around to, oh, wrong color, sorry. Wiggling around, something like that. And uh, let's say that my value A is right here. And so what we're saying here is that F of X is always in between the two. Okay, so since it's always in between, it has to go through right there. Um, and all you're saying here is it has to be near A. So it could be, you know, bigger or less than, you know, so it doesn't have to be um, always in between. So for example, it could, you know, come down here. Um, but all we're saying is that near A, it's always in between. So then, um, if g of x and h of x have the same limit, then of course it has to look like this, right? They have to have, they have to approach this same value. Well, since f of x is always in between the two, then they also have to have the same exact limit, uh, l. So that's the idea, and so it makes sense when you think about it graphically, but in practice, you know, sometimes it's a little difficult to find. Uh, the two functions that are in between and squeeze them. Um, but this, you know, has a lot of theoretical ap applications. And so uh, let's go through, let's do an example. Well, let me actually leave this here. Okay, so let me just, okay, so I've got example. Let's say we're trying to find the limit as x approaches zero of x times cosine of 1 over x. Okay, so notice that if you, you know, we do our usual plug it in, we plug in here, we would get 0 times cosine of 1 over 0. That's going to infinity. Now, what's cosine of infinity? Well, cosine just keeps going up and down and up and down. So this guy doesn't actually, uh, doesn't exist. So we have no idea what's going on. This isn't an indeterminate form where you, you know, divide stuff and factor and do all that stuff. So uh, for trig limits, um, usual uh, strategy is to use the squeeze theorem. Now, um, what we need to do is uh, two things. We need to find the two functions that um, are functions. So here, if I'm sort of using this as a framework, this is my, oh, wrong color again. This is my f of x. Okay, so now um, I'm looking for the two functions that it's uh, surrounded by. And a good starting point is to say, hey, well, I know that cosine of 1 over x, no matter what, is going to have to be between 1 and negative 1, right? Okay, so then what you can do 
is if you multiply everything by x, then what you get is that x is less than or equal to x times cosine of 1 over x is less than or equal to x. Sorry, this is negative x. Okay, so then you know that x cosine of x is always between positive x and negative x. Okay, so then, so that was the first step. That's the first thing to show. And then what we need to do is we fi need to find the limit as x approaches 0. So here's step 2. Limit as x approaches 0 of g of x, which is this guy, and that's equal to 0. And then we need to find the limit as x approaches 0 of h of x, which is this guy right here, so x. And that's also equal to 0. So because these two are equal, and we know that our function is always between these two functions, then what we can conclude is that the limit, so then the limit as x approaches 0 of x times cosine of 1 over x is also equal to 0. And if we draw a picture of this, let me, um, let's draw a picture of this guy. What this looks like, this function, x cosine of x, is it's big out here, but then as you get closer and closer to 0, it starts going and then big again and you know so not a very good picture um, but here what it does is so positive x looks like this and then negative x looks like this and so what's happening is it's getting squeezed right here by those two functions and so at zero as you get closer and closer to zero uh, this function is also going towards uh, zero